hey guys welcome back to the channel and today we will see how we can uh, import the model which we have designed in Cantia v5 basically the bracket and then we will see how we can mesh it and uh, we can optimize the model for our use so if you haven't watched the tutorial on how to design the bracket you can watch it I will keep the link over here uh, in the I section right above here and from here let's go and start with the analysis so right now I'm in the workbench and if you come to units make sure your units are in 10 mm metric because uh, my uh, part design or the bracket was designed in using mm units so make sure the both the units are matching now let's uh, start with the static structure let's call it bracket for meshing right from here let's import our geometry so let's browse our file and we have our bracket okay so it's an IGS format because uh, ANSYS uh, uses uh, IGS format for the mechanical parts all right now let's double click and go to our model tab it will take few seconds to open the uh, model uh, uh, mechanical window but uh, let's see yeah so here we are in the mechanical model window and we can see our uh, bracket right over here now let's say you want to if I right, right click and go for isometric view it goes something like this and let's say you want to, to create your own symmetric uh, isometric view so you can adjust your model let's say I want it something like this and then right click and set isometric so it will always recognize your isometric view like that very easy okay now from here if you see your project it's a uh, geometry material coordinate system and just before mesh you'll see a yellow thunderbolt icon which means the mesh is not yet generated so let's right click on the mesh and generate it all right so the basic mesh is generated and if you come to details of the mesh you can see physics preference uh, where it says mechanical and in the drop down we can see some other options that we have in physics preference such as CFT, electromagnetics, explicit, hydrodynamics. You can use all those other options if your part belong to those category. But uh, for me it's a mechanical part so let's keep it uh, in the physics preference as mechanical. And uh, further in the details of mesh if you come to statistics there are nodes and elements so these nodes and elements are basically uh, uh, it basically uh, varies for model to model so if your model does not so the same uh, number of nodes and elements does not mean your model is incorrect uh, it's just a number so these uh, elements are basically the number of these uh, triangular shapes you are seeing okay and these nodes are basically the points where all these uh, different elements are meeting all right. all right now the main thing in meshing is we have to opt optimize uh, the number of nodes and elements uh, to get a uh, proper uh, uh, results so let's see how we can optimize our mesh now before that we will close the model tab and we will uh, we will uh, optimize the model first so let's double click on geometry to invoke the design modeler and uh, once we are in the design modeler we can do one thing is uh, in the tree outline you'll see import one let's not uh, generate it first because uh, let's first set the units to millimeter and from here let's right click and generate your import uh, your bracket is imported in the design modeler and you can see it's a bit transparent so let's come to view and uncheck frozen body transparency all right 
so let's uh, say uh, we have to optimize our model so for that what we are going to do is we will fill all these groups the group section right over here where we have three holes so let's fill the gap go to tools select fill make sure your face selection is on and uh, press control and select your faces once you have selected all your faces that needs to be filled uh, you can come to your details view of fill one and you can see extraction type as by cavity make sure it is like that and press apply you can go for generate now and it's done the fill is generated all right now if you see in the tree outline there are two parts two bodies so one is the part body which was uh, our bracket and the solid which is basically the fill that we did right now so what we will do is we will uh, uh, merge these two parts and uh, uh, basically we will merge these two bodies and uh, make sure that it's a single body model okay so for that let's go to create a boolean and in the details view of boolean make sure the operation is unite and let's select our part body and solid apply while selecting these two make sure you are holding the control option when you see your model turning cyan color that means your boolean is done let's go and generate it all right so we have uh, completed our uh, boolean operation now the one thing that we have to do over here is we see that our model is uh, pretty much symmetrical along the axis which is uh, xz or zx for me so in spite of doing uh, the whole uh, the meshing of whole body we will uh, take the symmetrical part and just do the meshing on that so it will save a lot of time and a lot of gpu as well so let's go to tools let's go to symmetry and in the symmetry plane let's select zx and apply and generate so it just created a symmetry of our part and once we have this we can do the optimization of our meshing all right so let's close the design modeler from here and let's uh, let's update the project once we update it it takes few seconds to update the project because we have made some changes in the geometry so it needs to be updated right now then come into the model and go for update upstream components go for yeah so then double click and open the model mechanical window once we are in the mechanical window we can start with our mesh check your units all right now let's uh, you can see there is a question mark uh, just uh, before geometry so let's go to the part body and the details of the part body we need to assign uh, material so let's go for structure steel and if you come to your actual window area right click and go for zoom to fit here you can see your uh, geometry right over here now from here uh, if you come and see your mesh it needs to be generated so let's right click and generate the mesh so yeah that's the mesh and uh, let's do some changes with the uh, mesh so one thing that we want is in the sizing itself we don't want uh, to use adaptive sizing because uh, that won't give you an accurate result okay so let's go to adaptive sizing go for no and it will give you two option which is basically capture curvature and capture uh, proximity we want both of these options so let's click yes and in the proximity also let's click yes right now number cells across cap we want to keep it let's say two and uh, yeah that's it for the changes now one thing that i want to mention is why we did all these changes 
so these option uh, these proximity and curvature will basically give you a finer mesh where there are curves so you can see right over this area we will get some finer curves because we don't want it to be a regular mesh so from here let's go and generate mesh so we have successfully created our mesh and uh, if you see uh, let's zoom into this area you can see how fine the meshing is going on when we have a, a merge of uh, the curve and the straight line so yeah now what we can do is go to view go to front and uh, let's create a section view so go to mesh insert section plane like this all right and in the section plane itself show whole elements so you can see how the elements is uh, getting cut off from the plane so if you are uh, dealing with the curves and all make sure you are using the proximity in the mesh and uh, the curvature as well so this will give you uh, some uh, some clarity in the uh, results now what we'll do is we'll compare both the meshes the mesh which we have done right now and the mesh which was uh, basically the default mesh and see what the result is saying all right now so if we compare uh, both the uh, uh, both our bracket with, uh, with this override uh, override we have the advanced sizing function off so you can see how the mesh uh, is uh, going on and we can see uh, the elements and the number of nodes and uh, on the left side we have the advanced sizing function on where we define the proximity and the curvature so this typically shows the uh, advancement of the function and uh, how the number of uh, elements and the number of nodes are increased in right over here we will utilize uh, this option for further detail as well and we will go through some more options in the next uh, future tutorial for now let's uh, keep in mind that uh, the uh, use of advanced size function is uh, very valuable if you are talking about meshing in uh, ansys workbench now if you have any doubts with this one feel free to comment down below and uh, if you are watching this please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new uh, thank you guys so much see you in the next tutorial peace out